What's up, man? Hey, hey, hey. Long time no speak. <laughs> You're the best. I'm getting set up here. We, uh, just getting our kids doing their homework. It's nice. so sunny. So sunny where you are. So sunny. So sunny. Oh. Check it. So we, uh, we got a, like, a, one of those sea uh, jet ski things. Oh, yeah. And uh, we're riding out into the middle of the lake, and it shut down on us, or on me, oh. rather. And so I'm out in the middle of the lake, and then uh, Fozzie's Fozzie, who's um, he helps out on the on the ranch, he came out and uh, to grab me. But then the boat the boat shut down, so we're both out in the middle of the lake, stranded. And keep in mind, obviously, like snow just started to melt here. You know what I mean? And so. The water's freezing. I had to swim back to shore. How many yards are we talking? Did you swim? Maybe quarter mile. Oh, come on. A quarter mile in freezing cold water? Yeah, it was pretty crazy. <laughs> are you okay? I'm good. You know me. I love to do like the cold plunge type stuff, so. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So, um, real quick. You keep glitching. Uh, is that I, me or is that you? Am I glitching? Am I glitching? Yeah. Here, maybe let me just see if this works. Tell me if it gets better if I go inside. Tell me if it gets better if I go inside. Does it seem better? Yeah, it hasn't glitched yet. I think it does. Okay, um, man, I look so crappy. Um, Not possible. <laughs> uh, so I wanted to uh, maybe uh, talk about leadership. I woke up today with it on my mind. Um, what did it take to be a good leader? And also, what does it take to be someone that someone wants to follow? Whoa. So um, maybe you and I could just have a candid conversation about what it looks like to be a good leader um and uh so on and so forth sounds good to me um Can I start with we, a question or do yeah you absolutely yeah um what, what what do you think uh makes a leader what would be your definition of a leader a definition of a leader um honestly i had a really good definition i can i'm gonna go with you know i'm gonna kind of uh, make one up as I go right now because I forget, but um, uh, Craig Groeschel had a really good definition of a leader um, that I wish I remembered off the top of my head, but I don't. But I think being a leader is um, harnessing, I think it was something like harmon harnessing human energy to make a change. Wow. That's what, that's what, uh, that's what Craig Groeschel's definition, I think, was. And it, I thought that was really cool. I like that a lot. I love how Jesus says, um, I have not come to be served, but I've come to serve and give my life away. And I feel like in so many ways, leadership is seen as power. Leadership is seen as sway and influence, but so paradoxical, so Jesus, that, that, that leadership is first about like serving people, you know, just mm -hmm. adding value to people. And um, that's different, maybe different than the, than the status quo of our culture in terms of what a, what a leader should be, you know? Right. And it goes back to what we were talking about of like being someone that people want to follow. I mean, being a good leader and being a leader are different things. I think, um, yeah, just, I think someone who, adds value to people, someone who encourages the people around them, someone who uplifts, encourages, and leads by example is uh, an example of a really good leader. Yeah, I love that. My dad used to say, like, for preachers, which which I'm a preacher, he's like, you know, pre preach what you live. Don't try to live what you preach. And I feel like maybe there's a little bit of a delta right now in our culture. We all want to say what people should do but the question is what what am i living and and what's true to me and 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 i think that gives you the substructure or the platform to be a leader because what you're saying you've already lived it 
What do you think? Exactly. That's great. Yeah, living what you, preaching what you live and not living what you preach. That's what yeah. you said. Yep. Yeah, it's great. That's that's really good because um, then you're not you're not you're not telling anyone to do anything that you're not already doing, which is which is probably a good leadership tool. Very good. Can I talk about? kind of the strengths that I think you have as a leader and ask you a couple of questions about that? Please, I would love that. Um, I think one of the greatest strengths you have, and, and so oftentimes people don't, don't totally see you the leader. They see you the entertainer. They see you the gifted personality, the singer, but they don't get the privilege of seeing what I get to see, which is you leading a very significant and large team, a team that's counting on you, um, whether it's a, uh, creating content or, or a documentary or traveling the world. I've seen you in meetings. And I think one of your greatest assets as a leader is authenticity and transparency. Why did you develop that? Were you intentional about that? Is that something you wanted to be as a leader? Authenticity? Um, I think, yeah, I think um, I always was really frustrated by people who were um, – kind of had this um maybe persona or fakeness or just um I don't know I think I've always just been drawn to authenticity um I think a lot of the church community and church culture has been a, a huge turnoff for me um growing up and just kind of this attitude of maybe show your best hide the rest type of thing and uh which is really prevalent in today's culture in general but I think, yeah, being having the ability to, you know, have team meetings, express our concerns, um, you know, and really be transparent with, you know, what we need as a team, what we need as uh, individuals on the team, um, and so on and so forth, and making people feel comfortable enough to express what they need. Because if you're in a culture that you know, you're the boss and people are kind of scared of you, they, they won't feel confident enough to express their needs. So I think being a good leader is someone who makes your team feel like they can express what they need as well. Wow. In, in that regard, I'll ask you a big, big question. If you could wave a magic wand and give every leader one characteristic that you think is one of, if not the most important, you get all leaders right now in, in the world. I, we're just having fun. What's the magic wand that you wave in terms of, is it, is it joy? Is it faithfulness? Is it self-control? You know, what, what's the characteristic you think is absolutely essential for leaders worldwide? The characteristic that I think is essential for um, leaders worldwide I would say to pick one, if I had to choose one right now, it would be um, probably, I'd say honoring, honoring of, I'd say honoring of those who are around you, um, honoring of you know, people on all payrolls of all sort of, you know, of all kinds, just honoring everybody from, you know, the cleaning staff to, um, you know, management to just every level, just making sure that the honor is consistent and that you're not belittling anybody and everybody feels um, as though they're being treated the same. That is the answer I truly was banking on because I think, let's just talk about this for a second. We're talking about leadership and the importance of leadership. And uh, John Maxwell once said, everything rises and falls on leadership. You just expressed that honor may, may very well be the most important aspect for leaders, particularly in 2020. Can you, can you unpack a little bit more like, why is honor so important to you? And why is it so important to a leader? Well, I can just speak firsthand and say that I appreciate being honored. Um, yeah. And so uh, I think a lot of the, in the Bible, it talks about um, loving your neighbor as yourself. Um, and so I think as a person who appreciates 
when people honor me, um, I want to do my best to make people feel honored as well. Which is the ultimate, it adds dignity. Last night I watched the, the Mr. Rogers documentary. Um, bro, he was a leader who just honored everyone. He sang that song, I love you just the way you are. Um, and his whole mantra was that everyone should be treated um, for who they are and never less than who they are. And I can honestly say, Justin, I see you with the team and I have seen you over the years watching you for a decade learn and embrace and move towards this lifestyle of honor. And, and I just think I just want you to articulate it more because it is so significant. It has impacted me almost more than anything to watch you because without, you can't honor someone without humility, you know, implicit in honor is humility. It's thinking beyond yourself and honoring others. Um, can you speak to what you think humility is and what it looks like? Humility. Um, humility. What is humility? Who um, I think you said something else a second ago. Just I think one of those one one thing is just thinking of others uh, before thinking of yourself. I I'd love to look up the definition of humility. I think there's a lot of characteristics about being hu humble. Is you know being meek, being you know, um, someone who is has the ability to accept responsibility when they make a mistake. Humility is when you, you know, see others value when they contribute to something of success. Humility is something that, um, you know, I've learned through my relationship with Jesus. Um, and I think, uh, you know, learning about um, the fact that no matter how much I, I, you know, work hard at all the stuff that I've been given, it's my life is a gift, you know, and I've been given all of these things, you know, and I, and I, you know, I work hard at my craft and I put in effort and, um, you know, a lot of people would say, you know, well, you, you did it, you know, it was you, but, you know, I know that I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't, I didn't plan my birth, you know, I didn't plan to be here. It was a gift from the beginning. And so uh, with that being said, I think that's humility on its own, knowing that I didn't ask to be here. This life is a gift. And every day when I go to my creator and I'm like, yo, you created me. Thank you for, you know, life. Thank you for the trees. Thank you for the sun thank you for the sky thank you for the lake thank you for my home thank you i think out of that you start to really learn what humility really is that's my answer <laughs> it's a good answer because you're saying thank one you. of the hallmarks of humility is gratitude right it's great right. yeah you, it's great. you believe life is a gift that's how you I see do. it yeah yep so has that changed because i've watched you um and the world's watched you, you don't have to make the adjustments you've made. You don't, you actually don't, but you have, and you have become the person that you are. And it's been astounding. Why, why did you, why have you changed so much? Why have you gotten so intentional about relationships and honor and humility and gratitude? I mean, we've all watched it, but the yeah. question is why, 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 you know? I think that I've uh, I've experienced so much in my short life. Um, I've seen so much. I've experienced a lot of, um, you know, things that a lot of people would look and think that would bring such fulfillment, whether it's things and cars and clothes and money and stuff and girls. And I've just, I've had a lot of stuff that really left me empty. And so I really started looking to find fulfillment and um you know i i realized that you know the things that i thought were going to continue to give me that fulfillment that still to this day 
you know, I feel these lies that say, hey, well, if you just get this, you'll be happy. And if you get this, you'll be happy. Um, I really, I, I think I really took a deep dive as a condition of my soul. And I was just hurting and broken. And so I, I asked God, I said, if you're real, um, I, I need you to, to kind of show me. And, and um, I think it says in the Bible, if you seek me, you will find me. And rather than seeking after these other things, I just kind of started looking to God. And um, he uh, showed me, uh, you know, that I was worth saving, that I was worth um, dying on the cross for, that I was worth, that my life was worth, um, that, that I was worthy. And, uh, and it had nothing to do with what I did, because at that time, I was such a hurting, um, broken person who was doing a lot of bad things you know and so um to me I felt like how what did I do to deserve you know the creator's love um and so I uh he just you know showed me you are you're worth it you know you are I died for you I love you I forgive you you're redeemed you're mine I love you I'm obsessed with you and that is what changed my heart to know that well, if this guy loves me through all of my stuff, it started to show me that through all the people in humanity, everyone has stuff, everyone has a sinful nature, everybody has. It allowed me to start looking, you know, and um, really seeing the best in people and learning to love people the way God loves because, you know, we start making up what we feel love is according to our standards, but God has his own standard. And um, so I just started, you know, as I continue to seek him, he just keeps showing me his standard um, of love and what love is. And that's patience and kindness and, you know, all these things um, that are his character and that never change. So that's uh, something that has really changed my outlook on humility, how I see the world, how I love people, how I lead. And um, yeah, and I'm just it's given me such a cool perspective to be able to um, really uh, look and know that the best is still yet to come. Is that, is this kind of when the transition from just entertainer to leader started to happen? Because that, that transition has kind of been apparent to so many people. You went from, hey, I'm a singer, I'm an entertainer, I'm a personality to, I'd like to really help people in their spiritual journey in their life and and in that regard you you're a leader even the the album changes it's a lot of fun but it, it's promoting that life is changing and seasons and so is is this when you became a leader i mean did was that intentional on your part uh i was talking to harry hudson today um you know <laughs> well, harry yeah. uh, he's such a good guy um and we we're just talking he he said something really cool about um you know, his, he, he wants to use his platform to help people. And I'm in the same boat. And I think he was saying how music is his passion, but people are his purpose. Wow. Um, and so he was able, he's, he's like, you know, I'm using my passion, which is music. Music isn't the purpose. It's the passion, which leads me to be able to, you know, help people, which is the purpose. And so I thought that was a really cool way to look at it that is a great way to say it Harry, and, and he also bro. went in to say that his pain which you know obviously we know he got cancer and he's had a lot of other traumatic things happen in his life is what led him to the end of himself to realize what am i going to leave what's the mark that i'm going to leave in this world and um and so he's like i he started looking for his purpose and he realize that he's been given this extreme talent and music is a way that he's able to use his gifts um, to really fulfill his purpose, which is going to give him the most fulfillment in life, I think. And what's your, what's your take on pain and its role in your life? And here's Harry saying it brought him to the end of himself. Um, yeah. Do you feel similarly, similarly about pain? Yeah, I think uh, pain is... Uh, um, 
it's funny because uh, I took over your sermon when I, we went when I was in LA, and uh, basically it was saying how um, you know power, um, God, God, He's made strong in our weakness. God is, God, what what is it? Uh, His power is made perfect in our weakness. Perfect in our weakness. So when we're weak, He's strong, and it and it allows us to see His goodness and His faithfulness and His character in a time where we feel weak, and um, that's kind of where I'm at. We, which we just got to stop for a moment. And this, this goes beyond leadership. But what you're saying is you believe pain can propel us to unawareness of our need for a creator. Um, is, is that kind of what you're saying? Yes. Yes. Yeah. It, when it's like when we come to the end of ourselves, we realize that there's nothing we can muster up to really, I guess, like, I couldn't find it in myself to like heal myself or fix myself or be better because I just felt myself continuing to disappoint people, disappoint myself, you know? And I, I was like, you know, nobody's, nobody here on earth is able to, you know, I always feel misunderstood. I always feel like people don't really get to see the, you know, but then I'm like, well, God, the creator of heaven and earth who designed me knows me. I mean, he knows me. He created me. He knows the numbers of hairs on my head and who's going to honor or like who's going to care more than our creator. Totally. Yeah. And I think probably some of the misnomer in, in faith circles, but particularly in, in what relates to Jesus is this concept that Christianity the worship of Jesus and the pursuit of Jesus is that somehow Christianity is like a how to be pain free or how to avoid pain or how to be perfect. So you never experience pain when in reality, Jesus was very familiar with pain mm -hmm. and moved towards pain. And I wonder sometimes as leaders or just as humans, if we're constantly trying to avoid pain, if, if that's the goal of life, because I don't, I don't think it is. Mm -hmm. I could agree with you. Um, and I think avoiding pain. Yeah. That's not the, that's, that can't be because, you know, um, going back to like scripture and whatnot, going back to like when, when Jesus healed Lazarus or raised Lazarus from the dead, knew he was going to raise him from the dead, but was crying when he found out that he had passed because he was sad for probably Mary, Mary and Martha. Yep. And, Right. And, and, and he was sad. He was in he was in pain. And he and would you say that that was kind of like the point of of why he said, like it says, Jesus wept? Yep. He's in pain. And and, and so if that's the case. Um, yeah, we, we ought to be people who someone someone said sadness yesterday. They said this to me. Sadness is not wrong and sadness is not bad. And I was like, man, that's profound. Meaning empathy and experiencing people's pain is not only a massive part of leadership, it's a part of being human, isn't it? Mm -hmm. how, how important is it to you to be someone of influence who experiences empathy? Uh, I can say that it's very... Um... It's a, it's, it's a challenge. It's a challenge because of yeah. all the things and all of the, all of the accolades and all the people, you know, um, just all of the, you know, um, the distractions, I think, I think, yeah. um, there's so many distractions and then with social media and with, you know, um, with, uh, I just think it's easy to just kind of like distracting yourself from it and rather than going there because it's, it seems easier sometimes, you know, to just keep the TV on and not think about something and not, you know, and, um, and that's something I'm working on every day be, with my wife, especially because she's the most important person in my life. Um, just 
being aware of her needs and her her pains and her hurts and and her desires and her you know um insecurities because you know i'm just you know i'm learning every day what it means to be a husband and to you know um really uh have empathy to with her and for her because first of all i don't know what it's like to be a woman um she is a, such a strong incredible woman she's faces so much ridicule and judgment and all these sort of things um just for being in the position she's in and there's often times where i you know i've been dealing with what i've been dealing with for um for years for you know over 10 years and a lot of it i've come accustomed to and and just kind of learned how to deal with it and it's a lot you know it's just a lot in her plate right now so one thing i'm kind of struggling with uh is you know having that empathy and understanding that you know um i don't know what that same looks like i don't know what that feels like and um just try to because in doing that and feeling that empathy towards her and feeling her pain and we actually become closer that's actually a a, a really good bridge builder and a good way for us to connect totally you know? and speak to Talk for a second about empathy. Empathy is not sympathy, right? Sympathy is like, oh, I feel bad or sad for that person. Empathy is like being there with the person in their pain, which is what Jesus did. We believe this is essential leadership. It's like being present with someone in their pain, using your amazing wife, Haley, who's an angel sent from God from the heavens. Um, you're, you're talking about not sympathy, not just feeling sad for your wife, but sitting there with her in her challenges, difficulties, and pains, correct? Yes. And as a new husband, that can be really challenging. Because <laughs> uh, you want to fix her too, right? Real fast. A fixer. You want to fix the problem. Why are you so frustrated right now? Why are you feeling like this? You're ruining my day because you're in a bad mood. You know what I mean? And it's like, that doesn't, that makes her, you know, doesn't make her feel good. That makes her feel like she's not seen, like she's not understood. And um, everybody wants to feel seen and understood. Um, so it's so easy to be like, why are you feeling like this? Like, just be grateful for what we have, you know what I mean? And so I think for me as a husband, I'm just, I'm just want to, I, I don't want to distract myself. I want to feel that pain with her and for her so that we can be closer and I can understand where she's at. That's so, and it speaks to, I know what you and I share in terms of values in leaders. And, and one of the great values in leaders that we see in the, our favorite leader, who's Jesus, who we both admire so much and love, is Jesus was constantly kind of putting himself in the pain of others. And he was, he was staying there. He was just in it with him. And, and to your point about Mary and Martha, Jesus is just, he's just there in that verse crying with Mary and Martha because their brother's dead and he's gone. And he's not hurried. He's not rushed. He's not trying to be a big deal or productive or progressive or innovative. He's just, he's there. And I wonder if today in leadership, we need a little less like um, answers and mm -hmm. a little more listening and loving, you know? I could agree with that. And I think you're modeling that though. And you're, and you're, you're walking through it with Haley and, 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 and the team that you lead and I'm, I'm watching it. And I think how we've defined awesome leaders in the past maybe was guys or gals who were like really had all the answers and knew what to do and when, but I just wonder if there's an element of leadership that, that maybe is going to be on the rise in the world, which is that humble, honoring, kind, listening, loving leader that um, we see a lot in Jesus. Not that he's without strength, obviously. I think when I was young, I would look up to people who, because I was immature and I didn't really, um, I was just immature and I didn't realize what it meant to be a good leader. And I didn't know those qualities really. Um, and so I would look up to these people um, who I just thought were cool, you know, and I would see these cool aspects of them because they really are cool people. Like they're just like, they have this edge and this coolness about them. But then, you know, you look at their lifestyle and it's like, 
you know, they might be disrespectful or have this lifestyle where, you know, their, their family, their friends don't really respect them and yada, yada, yada. But you respect their either the craft, you know, or their ability to, you know, use their gift in a way that's like, whoa, this person is so talented. And you look up to this person, but then there's these, these areas in their life where you're like, man, for a kid, you don't, you're, you're so in awe of the thing that they're so good of and the gift that you kind of like put that other stuff second. Like, well, this is cool, but like, the, oh, who cares about his ability to be a husband? Who cares about, you know, and that probably goes to a, set, you can say that about a lot of things. I mean, go, even going to this like Michael Jordan documentary, you know what I mean? And it's like, this guy's a killer basketball player. And like, so many people love the fact that he's an incredible basketball player right. and he's, you know, this like dominant force on the court, but like, you know, um, I just want to be someone who cares about, you know, what, what legacy is this person leaving with, you know, their family and their friends? Because I think that's, as I get older, I realize the importance of that. I realize the importance of, you know, um, the impact and the the impact in the relationships that I leave behind that that really is the most special I think and I bet I can guess I could be wrong but I bet I can guess one of your favorite parts of the whole documentary of the last dance of course we're talking about is MJ's relationship to a couple of the security guards yeah in his was. life yeah was, was it yeah yeah I knew it all right yeah, because I can totally relate with that. Yeah, he oh. decided to. The, th those were his brothers, and he and he and he and he loves them. And I, I've seen you do the same thing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. Here, here's a statement I wanna I wanna say, and then I want your reaction to it. Brian Houston says this: Beware of the leader who kicks down and kisses up. Kicks down. Uh, kicks down and kisses up. Beware of the leader who kicks down and kisses up. A crude statement, but what's your reaction to that in terms of leadership? I don't, I don't, I don't understand it. So, okay, yeah, okay, all right. So, and down and up are just loose terms that are crude, but meaning you are disrespectful and dishonoring to people who are quote unquote in the organization beneath you or below you, and then you only kiss up to those over you. That makes sense. Uh, I think that that is uh, it's um, it just made I get I think I, I guess I could just say it makes me sad, you know, um, wow. that because um, you got a lot of young people or the people who might look up to the gifts that you have as a leader, you know, the, the, uh, the, 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 the mantle or the, the level of success that you have or whatever, like you got these people who so badly want to be in their position and they don't. Um, and so when you do that, I think, and, and to be honest, like I've been in a place, especially when I was really young of just not, understanding going back to like understanding the value of leaving you know what is the mark i'm leaving as a leader and as a, a friend and as a boss and as a because that stuff matters you know it matters more more than the actual thing you're doing because people we're doing it for people at the end of the day people is the mission people is the goal and so like there was a time where i was so um just consumed in getting and achieving and next thing that, you know, it wasn't maybe that I was intentionally being a, a jerk, but I just, you know, people were just not the main priority. It was about me getting to the next step, showing people how successful I can be, how cool I can be, you know? And so I can just say firsthand that that's not the way to go. And, you know, you're going to feel, you get to this place where just no one respects you. No one is really, 
wants to be around you and they can't wait to get out of your presence and they can't wait to, you know, that's, I don't want to be that kind of person. I want to be a person who can't wait to be around Justin. He just gives me so much life. He enables me to be the best version of me. When I'm around Justin, I feel encouraged, empowered, loved, respected, honored. That's the type of leader I want to be. And I think that's, that's, um, that's the kind of dad and brother and person I want to be. Are you, we do we have to go? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I have this to was go. amazing. I love you. I love Thank you. you. Thank you for sharing this, these nuggets, man. It means the world. Let's do this again. I love I really this. want to be that person. Me too. I want to continue to be that person. Let's keep being those leaders. That's lead, lead leadership is adding value to people. And that's what we're going to keep doing. Can you uh, say a quick prayer before we bounce? Love to. God, thank you so much for the privilege and honor it is to, to have influence in anyone's life. Thank you for the platform of leadership. And God, it's such a sacred thing to Justin and I. And we just thank you. We're so privileged and so honored to get to encourage people. And just I just think of people right now, God, you know people who are watching this, who are in really, really difficult situations, who are going through so much pain and loss and confusion. God, we pray you'd be near to them. They'd sense your love, your grace, and your goodness. Um, Lord, your reality in their room, in their space, wherever they are right now in the world. Bless the rest of our minutes and our days together. Thank you for your favor and protection over Justin and Haley. Thank you for their leadership in life. In Jesus' name, in amen. Jesus name. Amen. Thank you. Love you. I love you so much. Okay, talk to you. Love you, Hales. Peace. <laughs>